Hello and welcome back to Warhammer 2 Total War. Araby this time, not a uh, Colic Sun Eater. I've decided we're going to continue with the Araby campaign because people seem to like it and uh, <laughs> it was called a series by Shaky Rivers. So, you know, it's going to be a series. I was thinking of doing it as a series anyway. <laughs> um, because this campaign's going pretty well. And leaving it at two episodes, we actually did a lot of those two episodes, and we haven't seen all the new, new units yet. There was some other changes made. I think. Maybe? There was talk going on about the cataphracts and the, uh, Araby Knights. Where the cataphracts were... I don't know if that's actually changed just yet. But, uh, yeah. Or something about the roles of them and how they're sort of compared to each other. Because the Arabian Knights are pretty heavily armoured and they've got 90 speed. They've got the same leadership. They have got more melee attack. Uh, less melee defence. A little less weapon strength and a little less charge bonus. But uh, the shock cavalry, I think, in general, was like a bit better. They're only thirty, well, twenty-six uh, upkeep costs between them. So I think the idea of the cataphracts was that they're supposed to get stuck into combat and be able to defend themselves while they pull out again with a good charge. Whereas the Arabian knights are sort of faster moving, sort of for hit and run tactics, I suppose. More, more for the shock cavalry. It's, it's... I don't think the purposes of, like, cataphracts works too well in Warhammer 2. In the historical games, I think it works a bit better because they have a lot more weight behind them. And, uh, they can sort of crush multiple units of infantry. Certainly when I've played as, uh... Macedon. In, uh... Rome 2 with the Divide et Impera mod. And they get... It's not cataphracts, but it's sort of heavily armoured cavalry in the same vein. They just... If you get a charge off with them against infantry, it just, they just, like, trample them. And they can keep going. <laughs> um, and I don't think that's really depicted to... That's not really something in Warhammer. They hit a unit, they do a lot of damage to the unit, but it's rare for a cavalry unit, I think, to really just completely destroy a unit and charge over into the next one. Even like zombies and all that, you might succeed in pushing most of them over, but they tend to stop and then get bogged down into melee and you have to sort of pull them out again. Anyway. Uh, we had taken Fyrus, finally. I am a lord Etienne here. Never. Was apparently going to attack El Hike. I'm going to move Sultan Jafar back into El Hike so we can defend there. We're going to have to attack Kofa next and uh, the Leoness. Rapunzel de Leoness. There's a nice mod now out which gives her a short, gives her a long sword and her banner, so she has a big, nice animated banner with a shield on her arm. I don't have that. Maybe I should look into getting it, because the banner is really nicely animated. Hmm. But yeah, we can sit in there. Omar here is, uh, level 4. Have to get up to level 12 to get the royal elephant. Got our other two elephants here. And, um, yeah, I think we'll build the farm here. Down here, we have this entire province, and it's, uh, public orders in the positive. We're not at war with anyone else, I don't think. Oh no, we're at war with trolls and Knights of Origo, but Knights of Origo are going to go disappear soon. You dishonor me. Okay, end turn. We should probably attack while we have the bonus, because our units at the moment have a, uh, upkeep reduction cost, as well as, uh, uh, a 10% ward save? Pardon me.
Okay. <laughs> Got fruitcake here and it's tempting me. Okay. Kemri declares war on the Drake King Legions. And Court of the Barris declares war on the Trolls. Etienne lays siege to Ohaik. We'll just attack and destroy him because that's just them doing that since they have no capital. Not because they feel they have a good chance. Ah! Uh, put the Griffin Banner on the Cataphracts. There we go. Uh. Execute the captives. There we go. Knights of Orego are no more. Mumwood, you can get uh, evasion. And, hmm. We've got you know, quite a few turns until we're able to get level 4 for our hike. We want to get Kofa before then. The ladies, come on. Hmm. Well, uh. Jafar. Yes. You could recruit something else. Another elephant? How many turns do you have for this? Six. Oh, that's only for his army, though. Uh, hmm. I'd take two turns to recruit? Okay. Get another elephant? Yeah, why not? And you can get... Let's upgrade this Medina guard to get the swords. And I'll get two units of archers in you. Uh, anything else down here? El Calabod. I'd like to get this. Shining Spires Fortress of El Calabod. Uh, adds walls to the settlement. The tiered city of El Calabod is the greatest fortress in Araby, and its stalwart walls present a forbidding face to the undead of Nehekara. The jewel of the city, however, is the Caliph's Palace, where its amethyst dome, second only to the Sultan's, can be seen for miles. Come from all buildings, plus 25%. percent would be quite nice. We're also getting guarded of Bo Aliada. There. Be something good to get. Yes. Could possibly go for Cinnabar, but... Uh... Eh, eh. Trade resources. Eh. Oh, that was a new faction, wasn't it? Killing something or other or something? Hmm. I raise my eyebrow quizzically at that. I wonder what it's what it is. Hmm. Hmm. Engineer. Mumas declares peace against the trolls. Protector of the realm. Hmm. Ah, uh, we don't have enough upkeep for that. Get the Coria or the pools of despair. You can position yourself. Where will you move if I tell you to go there? There. Yeah, just position yourself there. And 
and in camp. What brings you here? I have unique icons for the camp. No, they don't. Not yet. It's a very, very minor detail. Um. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Pirates of Sartosa have taken the Chini. Apparently the Skaven are... <laughs> uh, pouring Warpstone into the ocean also. Hey, Kemri. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Okay. So, end turn again. And then a third time and get the elephants and then we'll probably declare war at Kofa and uh, march against them. Since we've got to keep this ball rolling, we can't afford the Bretonians to uh, get too comfortable in Araby. They're not welcome. Oh, followers of Nagash are destroyed. I think uh, Knights of the Flame just destroyed them. So much for Ark and the Black. We'll see who the fool. Yeah. Ah, uh, Phyrus. There is this unique building here. Grand Tomb of Mullah Akland. Which we might get. Does that give walls? No, but it gives garrison. Hmm. Mm. Get the swords. Go get Jaguar champions. Actually, get them. Yeah. Jaguar champions. Uh, fearsome nomads who, through great skill and courage, are allowed to wear uniforms made from Jaguar skins. 10% ward save, 5% physical save, 5% uh, missile resistance, iron forest, and blood howl. I think all of the units have had an update to their appearance aside from the Jaguar champions, so they might look a bit... Uh, um, a bit, you know, not as nicely done as the others. Um, we'll get... Hold the line with you. And, uh, yeah. End turn. There was also some discussion going over about the, uh, about how the, uh, Grand Bombard could function. Because, um, at the moment, it's not that impressive against walls. It does, like, 9% damage every shot against walls. And with the 30 second reload time, that, uh, takes quite a while. Hmm. It was thoughts of I I, don't, I think they're thinking of maybe doing something else other than the trebuchet, like a catapult or a mangonel or something. The trebuchet is just a Bretonian one, so if they change the model over for that, this is just things which the models are thinking about. Uh, from what I've been seeing. Uh, let's see. Virus, you can get nothing, really. We have our elephants. You have that for three more turns. And let's see. Uh, yeah, just march down. What is mine? March in there. These are our lands. We can't trespass. Right, right. End turn. No, my bats fell over. Okay. Hey, Bretonians. 
We got elephants. What do you have? Knights? Pfft. Hardly as cool. Also, as our height gets leveled up, we'll be able to get the uh, war elephants. Which have howdahs on them. Okay, um, you can get... Mmm, piercing bolts are burning. Since we're going to be attacking their settlement. And what do you need for raid? 50%. Go to here. Raid. Go to here. Raid. We're actually getting some slaves from that. We just... Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, we might have to build the, uh, hostelry building, she should in. To increase public order if the, uh, place we bring in will be a problem. Hmm. How many more turns? No. More than five. Do I want to build something else? Do we have enough money for something else at the moment? No. In turn. Don't worry, Bretonia. I'm not, uh, you know, attacking you. I'm just, I just happen to be raiding territory, which you currently own. Uh, it's nothing personal. Just, uh, you know, act like nothing's wrong's happening. But just ignore the armies coming towards you. It's all going to be fine. Dread King Legions before the Great Incantation of Kassar. Okay. Ah, uh, you can't move yet. Uh. Move to there. Stop grunting. Okay, move to there. So what's the slaves doing? Let's see. 86 we've got now. Public order is the same. Minus one because of corruption. It's giving us 12 income. Or 86 it's at 1% capacity. Max is 7,000. 14,000 for there. Hmm. Wait. Minus zero decline? Shouldn't it be higher than that? I mean, we do have some slaves. Maybe it will only count for next turn. I wonder... It doesn't actually give me, like, a... How much income it's making based off that. I don't know. In turn! Our strength is yours. You want trade. This is men? Uh, no. You want to oppose the great plan? I will oppose your not so great plan to uh, trade with me so that you can get medicinal plants. Where's that faction again? There it is. Killing Eye of Ghostfells. What? Okay. Where's Ghostfells? It's a mystery. Is that the Tree Blood tribe? Have they changed names to that now? Hmm. Or Tree Blood? I'm 
get an outlaw. And yeah, sure. Improve the omens. War further. Okay. They suspect something's up. As they should. Unyielding stride. Hey, Kofa. Speak before I decide you are better kept in a jail. <laughs> um. Declare war. The Green Knight comes to my dreams with sword drawn. Yeah. Does he come with a, an army of enraged elephants? Their life is mine. You take me for a fool, sir. Sir? Dead hours. Okay. <laughs> Run away! Okay, the elephants are, the elephants do give us uh What's it called? Uh siege attacker. Hmm. Do I want to attack outright? Pretty much. How much cavalry do they have? They have four units of cavalry. Most of their army is infantry. They have a field trebuchet. The Prince de Leoness has the sword of Leoness. Minus 15% magic resistance for enemy armies. Ooh. Okay. Um What do you what else do you have? Halo of maidenly wrath an explosion with blinds sort of leanness and immune to psychology. Hmm Gate there and a gate there, march down the middle perhaps. Wait a turn. Ugh. I'm just not patient enough to build these. Can we catch that other army? We can. Go and get rid of that army. Boink! Splat! Execute captives. Ooh, Banner of Eternal Flame. Ooh, bastard! There's some lovely filth over here! Lost 1% upkeep. Ah, oh, you've lost your ability. Uh, you can go there. And. Yeah, uh, just. Lay siege, I suppose. Let's just build some siege towers. Uh, this is. Oh, actually. We're at war with you now. Melabord Morin. So we should probably just attack them outright. Or. Wait one turn? Get some siege towers and then attack next turn. They can't reach me in one turn, can they? No. Okay, end turn. Why is our income negative? Hmm. Non aggression pact. Nope. Sorry, tic tac toe. Not now. Okay, good. They didn't sally out and attack me. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Grabeer's prospectors get a military alliance with Karata Karak. I wonder how the AI deals with the whole choose your path as the Greybeard's prospectors in the Lord's Tree and all that. Hmm. Should we wait another turn? To uh, get another tree. How much are we getting now? 25 from 171. Decline still 0%. Does it not actually decline?
I kind of feel slaves should also give a uh, growth bonus on top of the public order bonus they give. Oh, a, 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 not public order, income bonus they give. Because uh, you'd be using the slaves to, like, build buildings and all that. Maybe also for trade goods? Maybe. Uh, because they'd be helping the industries. Do I want Sorcerer Zarya? I want that over here. Level 4, level 4, level 5, level 5. Okay. Uh, that's 7,000. 8,000. Nothing here. I can build slave traders over there. In turn! And we'll get another siege, another two siege towers. And, uh, then we'll attack. Because I saw that army down there had it moved out of their settlement. Of Lashik, is it? The Golden Order, declare war on the trolls. Ah, uh, so much difference. Remember when the Nehekara was owned by uh, Ushuran and the Strigoi Empire? Or was it the uh, Silver Group or something like that? So was the Vampire Coast. There's placeholders for when before the uh, Vampire Coast was introduced as a faction. Oh, Grabius Prospectors! Wait, what? <laughs> it's done this! I had this happen during my uh, initial Chaos Dwarf campaign. I had nearly defeated Karazakarak, Karak. And then they uh, confederated with Greybeard's Prospectors. So yeah, uh, Karazakarak Karak is no more. And Greybeard's Prospectors are now the predominant Dwarven faction. That will be extremely interesting. Because that means now that all the Karazakarak Karak now have those small armies of Dwarf units with high... Uh, with high, you know, um, engineering group. The focus like this. They'll have, you know, the sentries and the, uh, uh, cannons and all the stuff we had as the Great Beast Prospectors. Th that's all, yeah. Look at that. Karate Karak. Now owned by Great Beast Prospectors. All this is Great Beast Prospectors. That's going to be extremely interesting. I wonder how they'll succeed, because their armies are very small, but it doesn't necessarily affect the uh, auto-resolve, because their armies are considered very good for their size. Why can we see all this? Oh, because, yeah, we can see this because we're actually allies with, uh, yeah, defensive allies with, with the uh, dwarves. I'm tempted to go to war with them. But uh, I wonder whether that means Karazic Karak Kadrin will confederate Arabian's prospectors. That's, uh. It'll be very interesting to see how it will turn out. Maybe they. I wonder what caused them to do that. That's Gwinghorn's raised. Pillar of. Oh, is taken. Pillar of Grugnies is raised. They own this. They own that. They don't own Black Crag. A gumbag Grom Peak. It doesn't look too out of the nor out of the ordinary. Oh well. The Empire owns Stone Mine Tower, of course. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad we got to see that happen. <laughs> am I? Yes, I am. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the uh, campaign map. It's just because the Grabius Prospectus as a faction is so different from how the Dwarves normally are. Small elite armies. It's kind of odd really that Grabius Prospectors can confederate Karazakarak Karak or vice versa because they do function very differently from each other. Leave tunnels for the dwarves, manlings. Or at least take something. 
Take their gold, burn their homes, kill their families and enslave their souls. Show them no mercy. Okay. Uh, what's the biggest threat to Rami? The old trebuchet? 86 kills? Possibly higher? Mm, I'm kind of tempted to wait on the towers and move them up when our Corsairs come from my second army. Mm, should we attack up this way? Straight up the center. Straight up the center. Because we've got the elephants. Bam! Brah! Okay. Come on, Ronald. You had one job, Ronald. <laughs> Ah, Ronald's massive middle finger. <laughs> it will block out the sun. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Go like that. Actually, get out of there. You go in there because you're more capable. Uh, you can go there. You can go there. Our flying carpets can go there. Ooh, there's actually something I kind of want to check with the flying carpets. Um, because apparently some of the effects might not have been showing properly, and I want to see whether that's because I have the graphics down or not. Okay, because I do play with the graphics down slightly. My poor computer. Um. Okay, so let's see. At the moment, the uh, flying carpets look like this. Which looks about fine. Oh, I see what that is. Oh. Yeah, okay. So, I don't think I have unit detail lower. No, unit details on ultra. Uh, so VFX. Might be that. Well, we'll see whether there's any difference. I'm not going to restart the campaign or the game for this, but uh, we'll just see whether they look any different. No. Okay. So there might be some effects which are supposed to look a bit different on them. That's probably because I have the settings down a little bit. Mm, I don't think it would be shadow detail. Texture quality. Let's have a look at that. Come on. Should only be unit detail. Maybe the texture quality is... I, I don't know how it works. Do 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 Okay. You look different? Uh, possibly. You look a little different. The carp carpets look more animated than they did before. So yeah, there is a bit of a difference there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just have a look at that. Yeah. So the uh, effect of the carpet is uh, a bit better now. They waver a little bit more than they did. That's pretty cool. I was seeing a bit of an issue in the middle there, but uh, apparently that's just if you have the graphics down lower. That's really nice detailing on the carpets. They're very colourful too. Okay, do any of the other units look different now that I've turned the uh, graphics up? I think it was only really that. Because that's, I think the carpets are like an effect. Maybe. Camels again. 
<laughs> Cataphracts. Ah. Okay, Ooh, and the elephant. Rawr. Okay. Mm, let me just have a look at the settings. It doesn't seem to be having any issues, so I suppose we'll continue playing like this. I'm not seeing any massive frame rate drops. Yeah. CPU usage is about the same as it usually is. Uh, position yourselves over here. Over there. And over there. And you can go here. And stop firing. War camels. Like that. Rawr. Uh, there we go. Ow. I think there was something about the elephants being in squads of one now instead of two. I think there's an issue. Uh, it's something I've seen mentioned uh, a few times that I think if you have squads, if you have small squads which are not like either one or four entities in the squad or something like that, then it has issues with determining how much health the unit should have. So you should always try to have at least either one or at minimum four. If you're going to have multiple. They actually nearly destroyed this tower. And they can't get closer because of the uh, wooden stakes. Oh. Go around. No, elephants. Get in there. And crabbies. Go over here. Uh, you can go up there. You can go up there. You're still just shooting my camels. Stop shooting my camels. It's very rude. Camels aren't for shooting. Hey, you. You can go up. Let's have a look at the Jaguar Warriors. So yeah, I mean, they don't look terrible. The Jaguar pattern is perhaps a little bit too dominant, but I mean, you know, wearing it. You can, uh, you know, wearing it is a kind of a large part of the uh, character lore and all that. Yeah, there could be some more variation in their heads. Um, what else? You go up there. D did I say climb the tower? Climb the tower. Okay, let's have a look at the walls. Because this is kind of appropriate. We've got our guys all up in a Bretonian uh, wall. Bretonian uh, fortress. Yeah, they're all just pouring from the siege towers. That guy there was a, uh, the, uh, captain of the squad. Where's Rapunz? I think she's back, probably back here. Yeah, there she is. Praying, I suppose. You'd like the model for her. Okay, have we broken the gates down? I think so. Mm. 
Get in there! Bam! <laughs> Giant crabs! Mr. Snips! <laughs> Go over here. Summon the gin. Oh, hello. <laughs> Fire. That is a lot of dead peasants. Get in. Ah, nice and roll. We're gonna to want to keep our elephants away from them. Mr. Snips, what you doing? Cabbles! Get in here! Bedouin, you can attack this, uh, gate. That's a lot of dudes there. No! Oh, there's some peasant bowmen right there, but uh, maybe you can outrange them? Your range is 175. Yeah, their range is 160. You can actually outrange the uh, archers. Boink. <laughs> if they were aiming for the carpets, they just missed. Charge! Snip, snip. You ain't gonna stop elephants. Not with your little spears. Aren't those questing knights? They are. They're not anti-large.
Oh, the noises of the elephants. Oof. Okay, where's my camels? There they are. And seven. Yep. Go! Charge! Ow! No! My camels! Uh, be careful, actually. There's some stakes in the ground over there. And not the delicious type of stakes either. Stop, stop. Dun, 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 dun. The rest of my army is kind of forgotten while I'm having all this fun with all these camels and everything. Ooh, I hope the uh, stakes aren't going to affect the. Uh... They do count as large. Where are you? You are. Knights errant versus camels and elephants. Victory! Rather nasty combo because the Bloodhound means that their leadership gets dropped by five when they uh, charge in. Or is it four? Four. But you know, coupled with the uh, terror? Yeah, the terror the elephants cause. Pretty nice. Some of my camels fled. No! Five of the carpets. Oh. Oh, look! Ha ha ha! I like that, if that's uh, planned or not, but that's pretty cool. When the uh, carpet riders die, the uh, carpets are left just floating in midair. <laughs> it might be nice if when they die, the carpet flips over and it still floats in midair. Maybe it has. How can you tell? Yeah! Me on Kofa. Okay. Hooray! Chaos A Bedouin scout's here. Uh... Okay. Doing a little bit? Okay. And battle. Decisive victory! 13, 0, 64, 58, 23. That battle was carried by our infantry. 23 kills from the uh, Desales. 3, 26, 3, 30. 53, 24, uh, 27, 48, 11, 11, 44, 192. And by our elephants, but uh, I didn't cast that much magic during that battle. The elephants certainly help a lot with clearing streets of uh, panicky, pe panicky peasants. Their charge bonus into charge defense just isn't good enough. You'd still have to watch out for knights of the realm. Though. And the elephants, as you can see the health of that one there, and without 
as we've found before, the elephants are not as powerful as the mammoths, which are uh, which are the Norse skins get. And neither should they be, because they're not that big, nor they're that ma they're, nor are they that mutated. But um So if they get surrounded, they can get withered weathered down. Uh I forget what their armor is. I don't think it's that high. I can imagine, uh, what's it called? Norskan Marauder Hunters with the, uh, spears would be very good against the elephants. Just a few volleys of those would deal with an elephant pretty effectively. They deal with mammoths pretty effectively. But, uh, yeah. Rapunz didn't even really get hurt. 17 kills though, but she fled. I wish the AI used their lords a bit more proactively in a battle rather than sitting them back at the uh, capture point with, like, the artillery. It was happening in my uh, brief Empire campaign where I was looking at this mod I was mentioning before I started recording called uh, Swords of the Emperor, which adds, uh, what's it called, Ludwig Schwarzhelm, Kurt Helborg, and uh, Hans Zintler. Two hero, two legendary heroes, and a legendary lord for the emperor, for the empire. And um, I was playing a battle where I was retaking Helmgart from Paravon, who had taken it out from underneath me when some greenskins came up and raised the settlement. And uh, all throughout the battle, uh, oh, what's his name? The uh, lord of Paravon was just sitting on the. Uh, was just sitting on the uh, capture square along with all of his Pegasus Knights and he could have been making a big deal but the uh, Pegasus Knights and all and he was just sitting there until near the end of the battle where we got close to the uh, square but um, we dealt with the rest of his army so he was just sort of all on his own alongside the artillery it makes my job easier but you know you don't really get a uh, duel against the enemy lord when they're just sitting at the back there. Also, they're not getting the benefits of the lord. They're not getting any of the bonuses they have during a battle if they have anything to uh, increase this, you know, increase the uh, stats or leadership of the units around their lord. They put captains and uh, other heroes up on the front, but just not their lord sometimes. Most of the time, I suppose. Maybe? I don't know. I just noticed it in this battle and that other one. Uh... Hmm. Also a lot of their cavalry, but I suppose they can't use their cavalry much during a siege battle. The cavalry just sort of sit on the wings and uh, ride in from the sides when the infantry have sort of been dealt with. Cataphract's got 53 kills. That griffin banner they had is very useful. If it stacks with blood howl, that's like a minus 8 leadership to uh, enemy units. The blood howl only affects when that unit's in melee. Okay. Uh Jahan. tell me much. End of an errant. Bretonia's blessed cleanser has herself been defeated by the ravening undead hordes which dare infest the bad badlands. Hey, who are you calling undead? Growth plus five local province. Double experience gain for units when fighting against Protonia. All units and army. Research rate plus 5% faction wide. Yay. Chevaliers de Leoness are no more. And we get Kofa, which comes with the Kofa docks. And a Shisha den. Okay. 
Um, anything which we'd want to get here. Public order building's fine. What do Kofa docks get? 300 income, sandstone resource, growth plus 20. Yeah, upgrade. The uh, main building. And you can get, you get a griffin at level 12, or a royal elephant at level 12. I will obviously go for the royal elephant. That's at level 8, that's at level 10. So we can get a crescent amulet. Allows him to cast magic, but uh, causes some chaos corruption. Hmm. We'll get Scarred Veteran. In preparation for the elephant, so he has more hit points. Okay. Camp! Mahmud, you can get... Hmm... Flamestorm. And Jafar, you can get... A Spirit Leech. Okay. We've got enough money to get this now. Uh... Yes. Yes, I think so. Okay, enter. We now own two full provinces. Nice work. Yeah, it'll be an easy process of just dealing with all these Bretonians down here now. Since Arkan the Black is no more. Poor guy. He just wants to bring the gas back. Is that so wrong? We were all long for the days of the gash. Um. Oh, you've got an army of mountain yeomen. No! No! Uh, that's a uh, encamp of t fifty percent. Yes. What brings you here? Yep. Move to there. Encamp. The oh, really? The okay. Encamp. And do I want to expand your army a little bit? Hmm. Sure. Get some uh, camel riders with bows. Perhaps we haven't seen those. And you can get Tuareg Riders. I heard that these are actually really good. Or they were changed maybe because they were too good? Let's see. 30 armor, 62 leadership, 92 speed, 25 melee attack, 31 melee defense, 22 weapon strength, and 34 charge bonus. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, 30, 62, 92. I am a lord of Bretonia. Never! Uh Well, they got higher leadership. 25, 27. Uh, 25, 31. Yeah. 22 and 30. 22, 34. And also they got Blood Howl. Uh, maybe. Get another unit of camel lances. <clears throat> and, uh. For the wisdom of. Aye. Let's hear what you have to say. We'll hear it before. All you don't like that I'm fighting against the Bretonians, but. Nuts to you. How is it, High King. Uh. What you called? Wanrag. Old Door Greybeard. 
I wonder if the High King would be changed over if uh, Thorgrim decided to confederate with another dwarf clan. Probably. I wonder if any dwarf lord has ever abdicated the throne. Possibly become a slayer? But then there's a conflict of like oaths taken there. That's the whole deal with uh Ungrim Iron Fist. Perhaps a treaty? Um Sudenberg. Yeah, for the moment. Attacking one enemy at a time. Ooh, I just had the I thought though. Oh, you demand peace. Peace. Ugh, what a shameful display. Uh. Where are you? No. No, no, you've got it coming. Um, I just had the thought that <laughs> confederating, the dwarves confederating like that is probably not too beneficial. Yeah, because Vulture Mountain is still their capital. And Vulture Mountain isn't connected to the sea. It's surrounded by me, essentially. So, uh, the dwarves can't trade anymore. Barakvar, Varinka Heels, Karasa Karak, it doesn't mean anything. All this, all these territories, they might have trade resources in. The gemstones, salt or whatever else, dye, furs, iron. <clears throat> um, if, even if, you know, because these aren't connected to their capital by ocean. If they owned El Hike, they could trade. But they don't, and I don't plan on giving it to them. Hey look, there's Grumbrindle. Leading an army of, uh... Arabia's Prospector's Dwarves. Diaran whispers. The power of nature is yours. Okay, move to here. Square action, uh, move to here. I'm going to remove you and just recruit another unit. Orders. And you can encamp. And... Ah, uh, for Royal Palace, I need Casper. Landed estate. Casper? Casper? What? Hmm. Hmm. Killing Eye of Ghostfells, Claire's War and Ugma Tribe. Where are they? Up in Norska? Probably. Possibly. Maybe. Grateful Paragons. Hero action cost minus twenty percent for all action, all characters. Lishik, horses, and not much else. Attack the settlement. Death is certain. All things must die. And go there. Okay. Uh. Right. Just one moment. I'll be back in a little bit.
Okay, sorry about that. Needed to go do the toilet. Uh, right, now. Let's see. We are laying siege to Le Chic. And... Uh, they siege like three turns, perhaps, maybe. Get some siege towers in there. I don't know if there's another army around there. We're just going to have dwarves marching through our territory the whole time, aren't we? Actually, come to think of it. How many turns do we have this for? Five. Okay. I could do that for three turns. That is perfectly fine. Is anything happening? Uh, not really. Let's see. Grombrindel moves up a little bit further. Maybe suffering from uh, desert attrition? Actually, no, I don't think they would be now. Okay. The lady craves peace with you. Her will must be done. No! Do not accept this! Bretonia's honor is worth far more. Oh, I saw that other army come up. Okay. <clears throat> um. Can I move you to. Here. And you can't ambush because you're in view of another army. All things must die. Uh, it's a fine army of uh, mounted yeomen you have. Well, I would like that. Hmm. Mm. Come on, bring the fight to the Sheik. One more settlement. And then after that, two more to reclaim. At least on this side. Also got Rittelhoff, veteran huntsman there. Talking about beastmen. Conrad is betrayed. I do have Conrad von Karstein in this, as uh, why so furious as uh, what they called additional lords and heroes mod. Uh, you need to make a, get a building for him though, when you're playing at the, the Von Karsteins, or as the Vampire Counts, you need to make the, uh, Crypt of the Mad Count or something, which gets him. Well, I don't think the Crypt of the Mad Count is actually talking about Conrad, I think it's talking about Isabella's father. <clears throat> um, but I suppose it works. Um... I haven't actually used him that often. Might be nice to have a mod which adds him as a, uh... Maybe just as another legendary lord you can get. At some point, I'm not sure. Maybe when you take a certain... region of the empire. I forget where he was defeated. Do I have... Let's see, vampire counts. Because he was... Added into in a book, in a in a version, and then he was sort of killed off in the same thing.
Um. It doesn't really say when he was defeated. At least not there. Um. Four armies. Uh, uh, it says he is com defeated by combi combined empire and dwarf army at the Battle of Grimbor. He is slain by Rufbad and Count Elmar. I don't know where Grimmore is. Okay, yeah, let's just attack over here. Go there, go there. Can at least draw some of their units over that side. Uh, hop out. You can go there. You can go there. go like that go there you can go there position that like this Giselles can go here okay yep no, you two, and there. Okay. Chaos. Right, move over here. I can hear scratching around um, the wall or the roof. I think it's possums. Mm. Those sneaky things. Okay. Ooh. Okay, that's uh interesting. Camel riders have... I uh, have the uh, voices of Empire units. Okay, position yourselves like that. There. there. Charge that. Charge the defensive stakes. And go there. Position yourselves. And once again, we must charge the walls. Be rid of these Bretonian filth. Elephants being a single unit are actually rather nice against attacking the gates, so they don't get caught up as much. I say that, and then they get caught up. Oh. 
Where are those jaguars? Oh. Let's Okay. Cop it. Go over here, I suppose. Shot, Lee. <laughs> I really like how they look flying around. It's really neat. Okay. Can't. Climb up the uh, towers. Actually. Oh no, because you, your army doesn't have the, uh, ward save. They don't have a ward save anyway. I was going to say, I wonder what the ward save of the, uh, Jaguar Warriors is, but they don't actually have a ward save as base. Uh, cast something somewhere. Possibly. Vague statements. Move up. Thank you, our champions. Let's have a is. Hey, don't do that. That's mean. Pick on someone your own size. There's a much fancier dresser than you are. Where there's a scream in there from Dawn of War. Like a space marine in there going, oh! off the walls. Climb up the tower. Can you get over here yet? Just manage to get to the walls and get instantly charged. Okay. Come on, the gene there. Oh, we actually own the gates now. Okay. Guard through. I was wondering when that was going to happen. Wondering when that was going to happen. Oh, 
Dive through my elephants. <laughs> They're just like, nah. Oh, mounted gentlemen. I wonder if it's possible for the elephants to have the thing like they have in uh, many, like in uh, Medieval 2 and Rome Total War, where they get scared of um, flaming attacks. Not that I'd really want them to be scared of the djinn, but uh, Bretonian peasants with a blank of blood. Um, Bretonian peasants with uh, flaming arrows. It's possible to have that a rampage when they get hit by. I mean, rampage actually doesn't do the same as it, used, as it does in the historical games, because in that it means that they attack things indiscriminately, whereas in this rampage means they just attack the nearest enemy unit. Yep, spread out. Spread out. Well, those knights of the realm have met their match. No, my nice now. Chaos good. Shouldn't take vowels which you can't keep. Well, I never expected the elephants. And the carpets. And and just everything. Or the carpets. Okay. Uh you can charge in. Camel lances. Charge in. Also, the camel riders. Oops. Charge in. We haven't seen these. Let's have a look at them. Yep. Look about what I expected. <laughs> camel riders with bows. It might be nice if they had maybe a little bit more... I wonder if it's possible. Uh, if they could have like a bit more detail to their saddle. I, I don't actually know. don't actually... I think it might not, not, might not actually be possible. A few lazy arrows over the walls. Start shooting. Ow. Now the flying carpets. Oh no. <laughs> it's somehow, it's not that terrifying looking, but uh Odd animations in attack there, they actually levitate off their carpet. Oh well, they're just that skilled. Wee! Bonk! <laughs> How was he killed? <laughs> it took a carpet to the back. <laughs> Ugh, look at all these Bretonian peasants. Dead! What's wrong with them? I've never seen wounds like this before. I've seen this before. Long ago when we faced Araby. What is it? Carpet burns. <laughs> what a way to go. You can move up. You can move up. 
Is there still a unit over here? Oh no, there's some. Thanks. Wee. They're shattered. And uh, to our rank, oh, Bedouin scouts actually. Charging. Camel riders. Over there. Arabic carpet merchants are really pushy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Buy them! They'll follow you home. <laughs> They'll show you the world, just to sell you a carpet. <laughs> this butte, fantastic. There's barely any holes in her. Was only driven around every Sunday by a little old lady going on to going to the church every Sunday. Barely even got 500 miles on it. How do you slap the bonus of a uh, carpet? <laughs> what is an age? Also, welcome. Uh. Poke, poke. Go on. There we go. Okay. Decisive victory. The Sheik is out. Oh. Yeah, barely any losses. What? Two thousand four hundred and uh, seven. No, two hundred and forty-seven. <laughs> Where did two thousand come from? Uh, eleven, three hundred twenty-four, fifty-five, twenty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, four, two, ten, forty-eight, zero for the Was mostly carried by the infantry again that one fight was predominantly on the wall I'm just thinking about carpets and all that. I wonder what the difference between a manual and an automatic carpet is. You have to turn them over to get them started? Ancient blade shattered in the War of the Beard, almost symbolic of that feud. Forged by the dwarves, enchanted by the elves, broken by their conflict. Prince Tyrion. Note that he says their conflict there. Referencing the dwarves, not taking any uh, responsibility of that. Pardon me. Um, I 
Only 39 kills for the uh, magic carpets. They did run out of arrows. I wonder what they were shooting against the whole time. They don't have that many shots, so you kind of want to make their shots count. Thirty-four for the elephant. And after this we've got the Sorcerer's Isles and the Wizard Caliph's Palace. Old. Get back. From the Bretonians, Knights of the Flame since uh Ark and Black was kicked out of his <laughs> kicked out of his region. I don't ever really see Ark of the Black be that successful. He has got a lot of opponents up against him. Fighting Bretonia is not easy. Especially when you've got armies of skeletons. You just sort of have to overwhelm them. And if they decide to attack you too early, well, not that much you can do. When I play as Ark and the Black, I have to be very aggressive. Come on. Nearly done. <laughs> uh, um. I wonder what unique buildings, if any, we'll have in this settlement. The Sheik, I think it comes with a building which is about, um, slaves. I think Le Sheik is the... Is Le Sheik the city of thieves? That bell audio. We do have some regiments of rena regiments of renown waiting in the wings, for a lord to get high enough level for us to recruit them. I think one of those El Mukhtar's desert dogs makes sense. There's also a unique unit of Jaguar Warriors. Okay, there we go. 58, 16, 14, 3, 1, 3, 9, 7. Yeah, they didn't really charge the cavalry that much. 22. Yep, 61. Okay. Uh, uh. Their life is what Let's take it. Did that stack it? Whispers. It might have stacked it. 12 turns, yeah. It feels like it stacked it. That's uh, pretty nice. Okay, you can get... Piercing bolts are burning level 2. Sultan Jafar, can you get any of your unique items yet? You can. Serpent Staff. The ruby eyes of the Serpent Staff hypnotize the sorcerer's opponents, turning them to fight their own kin. Winds of Magic starting amount, plus 5. 
Enemy winds of magic power reserve minus 12, local region. End of winter, end, enemy winds of magic starting about minus 15, local region. Okay. Magic melee attack plus 10, weapon strength plus 6%, and he causes terror. Get that one at level 16. Oh, it actually, oh yeah, that's also, it comes with the summon serpent gin. It really, it doesn't mention that. Is it different, actually? Leash of Aura Size, plus 50%. Winter Magic Power Reserve, plus 50. Has it changed? Are those... Or are those... No, he has got Terror. So those are effects he gets from taking this. Skill. But then there's the staff which he gets. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. I might mention that. Let me see. Where's my, uh... Notes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Araby. Um, Camel. Archers. Empire. Voice. Uh, serpent. Staff. Um, skills listed are not those from the Staff item. Staff item gives plus fifty percent leadership aura and plus fifty winds of magic power reserve. Yep, power reserve. Power reserve. And serpent, serpent, gin ability. Okay. The trees tell me much. Uh, the chic. Mm, doesn't look like there's a unique building in here. Okay, that's fine. We will get. Hmm. Bretonians are coming. You can sit here, and you can encamp. And the Sheik, um... I'm gonna get the fields. In Kofa. Ooh, clay. Oh boy! Do we need this for the Arabian Guard? We do. Is there no other option? I suppose not. So we'll build that. And we'll get the Kofa Harbour. Oh, we'll get the Royal Palace barracks as well. And the Kofa Harbour as well, because we can get all three. Bel Aliad now has the Gardens of Bel Aliad. Increases public order faction wide. Growth and. And untainted us three all regions. Quite nice. That would actually help us a fair bit with um if we decide to get those present amulets to give our lords magic. But they also cause chaos corruption. I wonder if it's possible to have a have to have a uh, unique landmark item, which a unique landmark building, which specifically gives bonuses to which gives bonuses to a specific lord. Because it'd be interesting if we had the choice between 
uh, for buildings between, uh, yeah, sure. Between, um, either benefiting the, uh, land, or we could increase the power of Sultan Jafar, because that seems like something he would possibly do, you know. Um, I'm thinking in particular, uh, between these buildings, because this one just seems so unappealing. Maybe if it had a option, maybe if it gave, like, bonuses to Sultan Jafar, or you could either go, like, legendary lord bonuses for this, or you can go for faction bonuses. So these bonuses are, for me, like, much more appealing than this. Maybe if it gave him more casts of gin or something, I don't know. I think I might have said that last time, maybe if it unlocked an ability which he was able to use. Uh, let's see. Okay. Quiet. Listen. Um. Right, that. And slaves off. So how much are we getting? We're not having any public order issues from the slaves. Slaves are generating 9 income, 165, capacity is 1%, decline per turn, apparently it's going down, but it's not, decline per turn isn't, like, percentage? No color bot. 8,000. Just have to wait for that, and turn. And we'll go take Serpent's Isle and uh, then go take Wizard's Caliph. Okay, um, yeah, you're fine to start marching out. Go to Sorceress Islands. And you can follow behind him. This is really odd because this is all our territory here. The Sheik has, like, this river here, but this is all ours. You can't actually get to Sorceress Islands from Wizard's Caliph Palace without travelling through Le Chic. Um... Let me see, did my slaves go down? 164. I don't think it did. Um... Just wait on that. Enter! I might want to attack Sorcerer's Island with my other Lord. That way we'd be able to get the bonus on both of them and have the uh, benefit of the upkeep cost reduction. The twofold rather than just one. However, I shouldn't get used to relying on it. It will wear off. Okay. Mission failed. Oh no. Oh, we can upgrade the Black Tower of Arkin again. Um. For Medina Kabira. That would allow us to get this or this. Or I can get a gold mine. 
go. Hmm. No really choices to make. Need 8,000 for that. Yeah, sure. Great. Move there. Move there. Morgan of the Flame. I have Tower of Wizardry in there. Hmm. This archipelago has been has for centuries been a safe haven for wizards in Araby, some even comparing it to the College of Magic in the Empire. Here sorcerers of all kinds come to study the arts of magic to earn the title of a true wizard. Okay. End turn. I think the whole thing of wizards in Araby is a bit... They exist. It's also stated that magic is kind of difficult to use in Araby because it's so far from the poles where most of the magic is focused. The winds of magic are focused, so Araby is kind of a dead spot for magic. Um, but there are mages. They, I think they tend to like live outside of the city. Hmm. I don't want to get it confused up with Jin. I remember reading stuff about them being about one of the two being uh, having to be placated by nearby inhabitants, otherwise they'll summon like firestorms and that. Okay. Um, how many turns do you have to wait? Eight. Okay, and I'm not going to bother getting it on the other army. Bye. Let's see, we'll wait... Uh, three turns for the siege towers? And then attack? And then we'll do the same with the... Wizard's Caliph Palace. Wizard Caliph's Palace. All things must die. Hmm. Armor of the Midsummer Sun. These enchanted plates channel sunlight, so beams of light burst burst forth to blind the foe as the wearer approaches. Plus six armor, plus six melee defense. Okay. Death is certain. Um, don't get anything there. Two more turns until we're able to upgrade Belt El Hike to a Medina Sat. Ilya Kabira. Yep. Cool. And turn. Something I was going to say, and I just just flew out of my mind. Nope. Hmm. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. Evanescent Rift. More magic powder. Power. Magical powder. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, that's right. It was about the armor. I was thinking that, uh... Yeah, that's easy. I, I was thinking that... In one of the, uh, Infinity Engine games, there's a suit of armor, the, uh, CRPGs. Like Border's Gate and all that. There's a suit of armor which... I forget what it was called exactly, but I think it was something like it blinded the opponents when you f or blinded people around you when you when, when you fought them. And uh, I remember the effect for it. I think was that your character started like <laughs> flashing really bright colors. I forget what it was exactly. I'm, I'm sort of thinking whether it was like something to do with like really bright sun enchanted armor or whether it was something like a, a suit of armor of the jester or something i don't know Okay. Ooh. Yes, I know how Karen. Tomb King settlement. Chaos. Okay. Chaos. Get out of there. Chaos. You go in there. There we go. Uh, line up. Elephant, go there. Puppets, go there. Elephant scouts, go there. Go there. Go there. Uh, you lot, go there. Okay. Attack. March up. Uh, there's no towers over here, so I could actually just put all my cavalry along the side there and not have them get shot at by towers. Unless they get shot at by artillery. Or archers. But hey, they can take more shots from them than they can from towers. Because towers, every time they hit, deal a casualty pretty sure. I, I don't think they really wound targets. They just outright kill them, which is kind of a massive pain. Okay. Charge up. Oh, great. S stakes in front of the wall again. No! They're using them defensively. Over there. You can't actually go over here or there because there's stakes everywhere. Stop! Ooh. 
Ooh. What did I have that from? Have a, uh... Wind Blast? Where was that from? They're pulling a sneaky on me. Can't just pull a Wind Blast out of your backside. Charge them. Yes, we lord. Charge up there. Okay, you can dock the wall now. Um. Only worth casting it on them. We saw the room. I forgot the other elephants. Or did I? Maybe I didn't. Magic carpets. Get in there. It's done. Oh, no, my elephant. Get hit? Oh, maybe a little. It's just a little crispy. It's still good. It's still good. Peasants, get out of here with that weak mess. Okay, oh yeah, you actually need Winds of Magic to be able to use that. Don't need Winds of Magic to use this. They're not really lined up that nicely though. Charge! Magic carpet to go! <laughs> I'd like something which would make the magic carpets cause terror. <laughs> Ah, oh, that'd be ridiculous. Oh god, it's a carpet! Run away! We stand against such... ...insane things. Krabbies. Snip, snip. Oh, 
peaches. Those knights are a good deal. Go after them. That's the noise a crab makes. No, oh, don't hurt the crabs. <laughs> I was defeated by a giant crab. Save the elephant. Save your friend. Uh, magic carpets, magic carpets, magic carpets. No. We. They're fleeing. As they should. Think we can stand up against all this? Twice. Guy's head disappeared. Now, chaos, good. Quill, hooray. Quipsack, search. We. And then Please uh. my chaos. Where's our kind of parts? Oh. Not much left on the battle map. They've all fled. Are these things they're like horses but weird you see the flying carpet bouncing around in the background chaos. go after them Just walk into combat. I gotta deal with you. Slow menacing. Okay. In battle. Decisive victory. Hooray! Was there any doubt? Probably a little. Uh, 49 kills, 61, 59. 120 for the elephants. Hey. Zero for the catapults. But again, siege battles, not really much use for cavalry in them. Two kills for the Gisales. They just weren't positioned in a way to uh, snipe people off the walls. I feel the crenellations on the different capital, on the different uh, siege settlements actually affects the... Because uh, they're different shapes. 
I think they affect the archers attacking the settlement from down on the ground more than you'd think. Some, I think on some settlements, people on the walls are more vulnerable. Skaven settlements in particular, I think they actually kind of lack crenellations, or the crenellations can be knocked off the walls. Uh, but like cannon fire. I mean, Skaven walls don't even really have crenellations, they just have like planks of wood on them, but I, I think that can actually affect like you know, a Skaven settlement, Skaven on the walls could take more damage from archers outside of the settlement because of that. Whereas on the, like, Tomb Kings one, over the gatehouse at least, there was a... There's a lot of stonework which is blocking... Um, archer, archer fire. I have to wonder also how that affects the uh, archers on the wall. I think there was something in Medieval 2? The uh, crenellations would mean that not all the archers on the walls were actually attacking at once because not all of them had line of sight because the crenellations would be in the way for half of the squad. That's what I remember. Perhaps wrongly, but I really need to do a campaign of Medieval 2. Refresh my memory of what it's like, which is a weird thing to say because I only started playing this series back in like 2011 but was it that long a little bit longer than that um it was around when napoleon came out because i got a box set which had uh all of the total wars in it from shogun all the way up to Empire. And then I got Napoleon Total War along with it. Hmm. Pretty sure I knew about this Total War series before then. I'd never really given it much thought though, because there were always earlier on my computer wasn't that good, so have a look at this magazine here, because I see on the spine it actually had Medieval Total War. Yeah, here we go. Medieval Total War. 5,000 units on screen at once? Where do I sign? Uh, got a 92 out of 100. War. Engrossing combat. Tactical plus strategic combination. Single player depth. Against. Somewhat inaccessible. Fiddly camera. System requirements. This was in... 2002. Same year SimCity 4 came out. I remember playing the demo of SimCity. Oh, but not Eddie Evil 2. It was, uh, very impressive. I don't think the demo actually really showed off the game that much, that well, because, uh, I think it was pretty much like two battles two or three battles i think one of them was like the battle of agincourt and then there was a siege or something siege of antioch mm. maybe was that just the tutorial it plays a tutorial for many the war Might have been. It wasn't... It didn't really give you a taste of what it was like, though. No campaign map, from what I believe. It was just a... Series. It was just some battles to see what that was like.
Mm, 54 kills for our flying carpets. 63 and 71 for our Bedouin archers. Must have killed quite a few people over the walls. Okay. There we go. 4,257. And we can get the settlement again. There we go. Man's ruin. Man's ruin. And we get the Sorcerer's Island. And, ooh, there's two buildings here. Tower of Wizardry. Unlocks Hero Recruitment Battle Wizard. Does that actually give us... It actually gives us every wizard. Wow. Uh, this would probably be for landmarks. Uh, unique landmarks of the old world. The landmarks of the old world mod I have. Uh, this one is most likely from Ovian Lost, Fac Lost Factions. So it, th this mod, uh, we, as we have seen before, it does double up a little bit. Um, that's interesting. I mean, for all the wizards, but... Since I think this is out of the, this is out of the theming which is supposed to be going on for Araby, well, I think we'll go for this one just because, you know, it's only these wizards, and I don't think we're supposed to be able to get all of them. The uh, sorcerers, Zawiya here, and he gives us amethyst, amber, and uh, light wizards. I don't think we're supposed to be able to get jade. Steel, and actually, this is Jade Wizards twice there. Grey Wizards. So what's this do? The Magicians of Araby. Uh, what's this? Madraset, Madrasat El Seher. Seher. Uh, the Magicians of Araby are experts in all kinds of arcane arts. Surrounded by powerful magical artifacts, masters of sorcery gather on these islands to unveil the mysteries of the sands. Hero capacity plus three for sorcerers. Unlocks hero recruitment for sorcerers. Wins a magic power reserve plus 10. All armies. 10% magic resistance. All armies. That's nice. Minus 10% cooldown to all spells. All armies. Ooh, wow. Uh, hero recruit rank plus 3 for battle wizards. I believe Araby is supposed to have... It, it does have... Did have their own lore in Warmaster. I can't remember much about it. It was probably a bunch of things like summoning sandstorms and blinding enemy units and so on. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So we'll go for that. A lot more expensive, but it gives those those benef those benefits. Those are really nice. And since this is sort of, it's nice to have this, but with OVN boss factions, boss factions, there's a specific landmark made for Araby. This would be made with Araby in mind. So, whereas this one is sort of uh, to benefit any this is, I think, for like a generic any, just just any uh faction which goes here. So. Um. Yeah, Sorcerer's Islands. We've got fields. Arms again. Sure, why not? Increase our uh, growth. Increase our uh, casualty replenishment rate. And you can get Winds of Magic Power Reserve plus one. There we go. In the camp, army took a f quite a few casualties. Fourteen turns for that um yeah we're probably going to sit here for a few turns so you can get that and get that there we go actually i might get rid of one of them and get one of these yep that's pretty good okay and ooh, we've got money now i'm going to get in El colorbud Shining Spires Fortress of El Calabod. There we go. There goes all my money. And you can get Pool of Despair level. Uh, you can get the uh, Slave Market. Pool of, pool of Despair. Pools of Despair. There's multiple Pools of Despair. 
And, uh... Yeah. I think we'll end turn, and then I'll call it for this episode. Because I decided to play Sorcerer's Island Battle. It, uh... Took up another, like, 20 minutes. Uh... We'll see how things go next time. Well, come the new turn. I suppose Bretonians just got to sit in Wizard, Wizard Caliph's palace. And we'll go and attack them in two turns after. And then we'll have the entirety of this area. I might go down and attack Tic-Tac-Toe so we can get his provinces down there. Maybe attack Sullenberg. Possibly go over and attack Cambry and the rest of the Tomb Kings. Araby is sort of this. From what I understand. I don't think they ever really ex were over here. This was always sort of a heck horror in, um, Tomb King's land. There might have been scattered settlements of Arabians over here, but I'm not too sure. Um, there's supposed to be a lot of settlements around here. So we've got just a bunch of major ones. Get this. Get Superberg. Okay, um... Oh, you went up a level! Ah, uh, you can get... Uh... Hmm. Doom and Darkness. That's always a favourite. And... I'll hike it's level four. Don't have enough money for it. No. Stop building the farms. Is that enough? God damn it. Oh well. Um. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I will save it here. And we'll end turn next time and continue with the campaign next time. Which I'll probably do Colex Anita again next time. And then we'll do the day after. The Caliphate of Araby again. Ugh. Then after Colex Anita is finished, which will be two more episodes. I'll probably focus just on this. Until the uh, next uh, campaign. Hello. I hope that's not a hello. I hope that's a goodbye, because I'm just finishing up. Ah. So unfortunate if it is. Anyway. Yes. We did a fair bit of progress. And Fyrus, we took Kofa, the Sheik, and Sorcerer's Islands. A bunch of fights against Bretonians. Pushing them back, not much difficulty. The oddest thing that happened... The Dwarves confederated into Greybeard's Prospectors. Now Carissa Karak is owned by Greybeard's Prospectors. And apparently it's not going too well for them, because, uh... Karak, Dromar, and Oakenhammer are now raised. Isashout and Swatshafen are raised as well? Okay. What's going on? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Ekron's being sieged. They did move two armies up here, and I wonder where they went and they, they ended up. It's a goodbye. Well, good. <laughs> As I've said a few times, um, I appreciate people for watching me. I don't have a counter visible for whether there's people watching me or not, because even though I know there's regulars, I kind of prefer not knowing whether people are watching me, in case it ever goes to zero. That way I'm still acting like there's people watching me. <laughs> anyway. Go exit to main menu and we'll call it for, uh, we'll have a two total war Araby for tonight. Uh, I think Colex I need it next. Hmm, we destroyed Krasakrak last. I think I was going to go and attack against the Empire. We'll smash try and smack them around a bit. Well, six Empire armies and a bunch of Bretonian armies following me though. Hopefully they've gotten distracted by something else, but I don't think so. Anyway, that'll be it for this one, and I will hope you'll join me for the next one.